John and I hired fishing guide Bob Mandel on Belton Lake to learn how to use sonar to locate and catch white bass and hybrids. In this video, Bob shows us where to look for white bass and how to use sonar to identify fish and also teaches presentation techniques to catch them. Bob is the professional's professional willing to teach so that I could go out and do it on my own in my own boat. On a slow bluebird day, we boated 60 fish. You'll definitely learn something new in this video. If so, let me know in the comments and I'll put you in the drawing for a free Skunked Again fishing shirt. If you didn't learn jack squat, also let me know. Enjoy and thanks for watching. Strategy there as far as where we're looking for fish if there are no birds. Sure. Uh, there are at this time of year uh, a number of I won't say spots because spots kind of refer to a, a location a point on a map. Yeah, yeah. If you spot fishermen don't do well because right. they just go to the same spot, right. they look and if nothing's there, they leave. We're gonna we're gonna look at areas. Okay. Okay. And typically these white bass and hybrid striper like areas near a rapid depth change okay. okay so if you have an underwater flat and it comes out comes out for whatever several yards and then drops down into the river channel that break line is very attractive okay, okay? Uh, a classic spot for whites and hybrids are humps because humps rise up off of an otherwise flat bottom okay, okay? also uh, shorelines or banks with a rather fast gradient not a sheer drop but a okay. fast slope okay are also attractive ah. and not only that where they turn out and meet the bottom the basin the flat bottom that bend that uh that uh curve is particularly attractive the base of those areas mm, okay. so those if there's any commonality in the areas that we search with sonar Barring okay. birds, that's the kind of that's okay. the kind of Great. area Thanks. that we're going to do. That sonar, okay, you can see there's a, a tremendous amount of bait between 30 and 50 feet. You see this band here? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's possible that we got game fish that are driving that bait up to the surface. Shad, 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 all of these, all of that is shad. That's a big ball of shad right there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Got a couple game fish in here. See here? Yep. Here? Yep. And these uh, larger white specks are our game fish. Okay? So there's a few. And, fish and in this here. is a whole thing of shad. Oh, there? that's all shad. There's there's millions of them in here. Wow. Yep. Yeah, every here we'll zoom in here. Yeah, look at this. Okay, so every single grain God. is an individual shad. That is cool. Take a picture. Okay, this is the hump, okay? And this is how much we've covered of it so far. There's a lot of area. Then there's another minor hump to the northwest of that. So any of this area and all of this area have, have produced fish in the past. Mm -hmm. so Different times. Just the waypoints are a starting point for me. They're not a yeah. end all be all, that's for sure. There's fish. That's fish right there. Okay? There, there, there. You saw they were hard to the bottom. You're talking probably 30 fish right there. We're going to probably be using one or two techniques today. The first one is called snap okay. jigging. If I go and dip my rod tip any lower, the line's going to go slack right there. Mm -hmm. If I bring it up to the surface, it's taut. Yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring it up that uh, 8 or 10 inches, and then I'm going to snap. Snap it, put rod tip right back. The instant that happens, that's when it's going, the bite's going to happen. John, did you find a similar rig? Or? Yeah. Okay. Do you think you he, you, you lost him on the motor? Or? Yeah, he got pulling up the motor. Okay. Well, I tell you, before we go, I'll raise it up. Maybe it, at least your loop rig is stuck in the prop or something. I don't think so. I think it's gone. Yeah, it's yeah. Gone. He hit that on the right. That's a crappy. Look at there. Technique Honest. number two is much simpler, and we'll really only use it if we're under birds. Where if we're under birds, and sonar reveals that we've got fish chasing bait up off bottom towards the surface, you'll see them in the lower half of the water column typically. And so in order to get to those fish, what we'll do, typically using the heavier, heavier <coughs> uh, slabs, 
is let those slabs down and then we're going to reel right up through and pass those fish with a, a moderate cadence one two three four he is not to get it to the fish it's to get it beyond the fish You got snap jigging. Snap jigging. You got easing. Easing. And you got smoking. Smoking. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. On three. Okay. Do it on three. Yep. Yeah. Jig, pause, jig, pause. That's where the fish struck. Wow. So we're going to go back now. This is you reeling that fish in. And we had one, two, three, four, five, Six fish following. Here they are a little clearer on no the No kidding. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six fish. Lifted up off bottom. Those fish were Interested. there. They've been there this whole time. And when that fish got hooked, they were competitive. They they were like, wanted to go after yeah, the... jealous that their buddy got some. Like, what's going on? That actually this one is that one. Okay. This okay. suspended one is that one. I see. Okay. Okay. You can see them both there and there. Okay, here's another small school of fish. Okay. See this group? And there's another and two more. You got group and two more. Well, the group and two more. Okay? Yeah, I'm here. I didn't even know. Look at that. Nice bunch of fish. That's a big bunch of fish right there. Okay. See them? Wow. Okay, yeah, see them? see them. And right there. Okay, well, so we're so going to get on. Wow. What's that? There's so little on the screen. I'm, I, I well, I mean, really... that's almost 50 feet of water, you know? Oh, yeah, it's about a, on this one, it's about a 1 to 3 ratio. So okay. 45 feet, you got about a 15-foot circle of bottom that you're looking at. Okay. Seven and a half feet to either side of the transducer in front. And those, are, those are blue cats. You see how they're well-spaced? They're given a nice big signal, but they're well-spaced apart. Uh -huh. not congregated together. Those are suspended yeah. off of a slope. That, that's kind of their nature. That's, that's uh -huh. how they... That's what they do. Okay. Now the large mouth and small mouth, because they're so cover loving, they're often going to be buried so deep in whatever they're holding by that you're you may not, not going to see, see them. them first. I okay. take people out and do sonar training and uh, tell them all the time, you know, you're going to you're going to let a lot of opportunities slip by if you hope to see on sonar a fish. Every large mouth or small mouth bass okay. so, so, that you catch before you catch it you're gonna pass a lot of fish up because okay. they really hold down and in and around mm -hmm. stuff. White bass and these hybrids, they're not like that. They're pelagic fish are ever roaming after shad and so they're very exposed because they yeah. don't hide in stuff. Okay. So uh, they're much, much easier to see. I'm Given sorry. how I have my color line adjustment adjusted, I should be seeing at least some yellow inside those fish signals if those fish are of any of any size. Oh. If they're catchable fish, you're going to have at least a little bit of yellow in them like that. Okay. Okay, this, this, that, those are small fish. We're not going to mess with those. Now, when you say your adjustment, is that your sensitivity adjustment? Uh, no, color line. Here, I'll show you. Do you see color line? Uh-huh. I keep mine permanently set at 74%. Oh, that's and good to know. sensitivity is what I adjust. Routine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's Snoopy. another one for John. There. Scores. There you go. There you go. John, would you mind trading with me? I'd like to feel what that feels like. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt that's an effective bait. I'd like. I'd love to have a have another. You know, one of I was thinking I probably will send you a few. Uh, <laughs> that too, Bob. So, uh, do you intentionally underfill your school, or it just? It's, uh, I no, it's I said, you know, room. normally it's full. Uh -huh. I just, I just uh, didn't check it. Bob catches one on the Snoopy prod. All right. And then once he saw us, that... Well, he's, <laughs> well, he's yeah, killing them on these. You, that's why I brought my own stuff, because I, I always got to, I always go with that rod and a little bitty big when the fishing is tough, it's tough to fish it. <laughs> <laughs>